Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we're uh, going to do just kind of a follow-up on Jadam Microorganism Solution and how we're making it. But uh, we've concentrated a lot in the past about the actual process of once you've already captured your your uh, compost soil or your leaf mold soil, basically, you know, how to make the, the actual uh, solution. So I thought today, you know, we've got a batch here going in the, in the back of the crate house here, and this has kind of been at ambient temperature. We kind of wrap it up at night. Uh, and I, so I thought what I would do is just kind of talk to you guys today a bit about how we go and get the actual inoculant itself on our property. Now, we've talked about the compost soil, and that was pretty straightforward, that we're looking for soil that uh, has basically been under an active aerobic compost pile for you know, several months or, or maybe even longer, and that's usually full of good biology. That, that layer of soil that's right there at the interface between where the compost leaves off and the soil begins. But there's also other things you can do on your property. If you don't have aerobic uh, compost piles, you can, if, if you don't have access to going into, you know, more forested areas and capturing some leaf mold there, you can actually find it probably even on your own property. Uh, areas where you may be having uh, a grove of trees growing, such as like maples or oaks or, you know, deciduous trees. Um, you can usually find, you know, good biology growing around the base of those trees, particularly in the spring when uh, biologic activity is picking back up. Uh, moisture levels are, are usually pretty good. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk up to an area where we have some maple trees, a birch trees, an oak tree, and kinda you know, get some of that soil. So first though I thought, show you this is an example of a, a four gallon bucket of of microorganism solution that's been going now we're uh, approaching 72 hours this has been ambient our temperatures have been uh, maybe in the crate house about 70 during the day and getting down to the uh, high 30s at night so even without supplying um, extra heat through like a, an aquarium heater or something like that you can make the microorganism solution so I thought I'd just show you guys here, this is what it kind of looks like. This, this particular solution is pretty close to being ready. Okay, so when you look inside, what you can see is we have a nice, towards the center of it, small bubbles going. And that's usually very typical of a lower temperature JMS. But there's definitely a ring around the outside. And this, is, this batch is probably pretty close to being ready to go. Um, we're probably going to let it go to this afternoon and then apply it um, right around dusk um, to our crate house that has our mums and where we're going to be planting our uh, dried house. beans. Yeah, hoop house. Yeah. Is that what I said? Crate house. Crate it's house. We're in the crate we're house. We're in the crate house. <laughs> it's going to be in the hoop house where we're going to have our dried beans and our mums. So what did we use? This is an example of the material. You just go, looks just kind of like dirt. But that's actually leaf mold soil that we captured. And we only used about a good handful of it with a uh, about 60 grams of potato. I mean, if you wanted the recipe to be precise, you could use 20 grams of the inoculant, 60 grams of potato, 15 grams of sea salt, and uh, puree the potato uh, mixture up with the sea salt and we use a paint strainer bag and just kind of uh, you know mix the potato mixture into the water itself. We use either rainwater or well water but no chlorinated water. So we'll wrap this thing at night with a uh, fabric cloth just to kind of keep it from uh, you know going too too cold so most of the heat during the day is uh, that's captured in the bucket stays that way. And that's all there is to it. It's very simple. But the material is really the key of what you're using for your inoculant. So let's go up and take a look at that. This is our, I guess if you want to call it our little mini forest. It's just an area on the farm that's a little bit wild. There's some deciduous trees growing here. We got a pin oak and we've got 
some uh, maples, a birch, another big maple, and a few brambles underneath. But every year, these big trees dump a lot of leaves into this area. And uh, we've just basically, when in the springtime, we're just about at a point now, we'll come in through here and scythe all these brambles down. And it's just kind of been building this way for uh, several years. It's kind of it's kind of a hidden spot on the on the place where uh, it doesn't really matter, and it kind of keeps um, you know I guess maybe a little bit of wildness into things. But this is an area too where um, we get a lot of like these are brand new little pin oak trees, and sometimes what I'll do with these guys is I'll take these guys and I'll transplant pin oaks or maples to um, other areas of the property, just trying to get them started on places. Uh, and, you know, so you can tell it's still kind of fertile in here. And so what I do is I look for when I'm talking about leaf mold. Now here's an example, here's a little maple tree right here. And as you can, excuse me, Miss Cat, you can kind of see on the maple roots and you can kind of see that there's fungal, fungal things attached to it. So this is a really good area for a lot of good biology in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape the, the top leaves aside. Now here's another example of some more hyphae that, and root. So it's kind of got a bit of both in it. And uh, what I do is I just kind of scrape the, the less decomposed materials aside. And I know that as I dig into here, I can feel some roots, but there's also um, kind of loose soil. And here's another example of high fill root, high fill uh, activity on some of the decomposing material. So this is all pretty good. So it's nice and moist, has a real good earthy smell, kind of like new dug potatoes. And that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this material here and just capture this. And it's okay if some of these roots are left in here. I'm not going to worry about it because there's probably a lot of good biology around the roots. And sometimes there's trash. And it's really easy to dig it out. So it's got a real nice fragrance to it. And that's the material I'm going to be using for making my JMS and all that. It's a little bit of soil in it, a lot of fungal material in it. And this makes an excellent uh, JMS. Even got some wildlife in it. Little uh, looks like a potworm. Not necessary to you know make something out of him. Let him go back to do his thing. And so we can capture this time of year in mid-May. Uh, things are really damp in here. Biology is really rocking, and we can capture a lot of good stuff. Okay, that's about all there is to it. And uh, you know, as for storage on it, what we typically do is, uh, you know, we'll just put it in a, like a coffee can. I try not to make it, um, you know, too complicated, but it's a coffee can with a little bit of a lid to it. Don't seal the lid all the way down. Just make sure there's still moisture in there with it, and uh, store it in a cool space. You know, in the summertime, we have an old root cellar. We kind of just uh, leave the material in there. Uh, we can store it for several months, actually, as long as we keep moisture in it. Um, you can, you know, if you feel like, oh, I need to add some more food source to it, you know, like maybe, uh, you know, it doesn't smell as earthy and freshy as it used to. Surprisingly, what you can do is you could throw, um, you know, uh, particularly if you had a large amount of it, like a, uh, you know, a couple gallon pail of it, uh, you could throw in, you know, a quarter cup of uh, rolled oats into it and just, uh, that are kind of been dampened a little bit and just kind of mix it up with it. And that'll act as a feed source for the biology on that too. So there's ways that you can harvest it in spring and kind of use it through the summer. So like uh, particularly maybe if you're in a, you know, much drier climate in the summertime that it's more difficult to get, you know, a good biologically active leaf mold soil, you know, that's always an alternative. You can harvest it in spring or harvest it in fall. That's another time to get it too, is, is like after the fall rains come in, in our area, we can go and harvest leaf mold soil there and also 
store it through the winter time and use it making JMS through the winter time when biology out in the field is actually kind of low. Uh, the material will stay alive in, in storage for you know several months. So I don't think you can store it you know super long time and, and certainly the more you keep feeding it oats, you're kind of selecting for a you know maybe a more narrower set of diverse uh, organisms in it. So you kind of got to weigh it with a grain of salt. There's, there's a period of time when you're going to have to go back and refresh it. Now we've also used compost soil. That also too, you can use the same techniques. If you want to, you know, kind of store it for a while, harvest it when it's at its optimum. Maybe, you know, when, uh, after, uh, you know, when things are warmer in the summertime or, or into the fall, uh, typically that soil is, pretty biologically active if it's had moisture and compost above it to kind of keep it you know temperate so to speak so that's basically it um, very simple and thought we'd just share that with you guys today this makes a great uh, biological additive particularly when you're putting in your your liquid fertilizers to kind of mix these two together at the same time with some biology in the soil and, and also put uh, some fertilizer in at the same time. So this is designed mostly for a soil dredge. Yeah, it's uh, most of the Jadam, the philosophy on Jadam for the most part is not about foliar feeding, it's about feeding the soil. So uh, they're, the whole point of uh, using the liquid fertilizers isn't so much to make it a foliar feed, but is to make it a, a good drench into the soil either through your irrigation system or applying it like uh, we use the, the Maze injector type thing. It's the same thing with JMS, which is the microorganism solution. Now there are applications for the microorganism solution from a foliar standpoint to help maybe prevent some fungal diseases. The idea being to kind of outcompete uh, things. Um, and th those are a little bit more uh, technical because typically they're added with a, a small amount of wetting agent you know so that the material stays to the leaves and uh, those are those are kind of advanced techniques in Jadam that we hope to be able to start using some of that soon too. Just trying to get a handle on what we do know and how it works. Yeah my focus really has been for the last year or so is getting the soil uh, microorganism solution going and getting the liquid fertilizer system figuring out how much to put on the plants, watching the response, uh, you know, how old is, is the best fertilizer, you know, and, and that sort of thing. And then the, the next steps up for us and Jadam are gonna be, okay, well, how do we deal with any kind of uh, diseases the plants might get or bug infestations and things like that? Yeah, bugs. Yeah, we, we did some experimenting, if you remember last year with uh, making some uh, insect uh, Jadam herbal solution out of eucalyptus and that was actually pretty successful so we hope to uh, do more in the Jadam process and and kind of really kind of get it integrated into what we do here on the farm any thoughts uh, no nope Just... okay folks well thanks for watching today and I hope you stay safe out there have a good week and we'll catch you on the next video bye 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 bye